what is up guys and welcome back to another discord bot tutorial video and we are finally getting started with databases in this series so um like i know like a lot of you that are long time viewers on my channel um like ever since the you know like part one of the bot tutorial you've been waiting a long time um like it's been quite a few months since i've done something new um, in this series so um, like in this series we're going to be integrating a database into our discord bot so so far um, like the only methods of storage we've been using is just external files like JSON but eventually as your bot starts to gain traction and you know like gain more popularity things are going to get pretty out of hand pretty soon and you need something to manage that right so we're going to be integrating a database into our discord bot to make life a lot easier it just makes like things more seamless and more optimized in your Discord bot. Let me actually get you viewers up to date with what's happened so far in the series. So uh, parts one to five should be replaced with newer videos um, because the, um, the earlier parts of the series are pretty much outdated. They follow some practices which are like quite questionable and don't really work in 2023. Um, like I know one, you know, um, you know, like one complaint was. Um, like the fact that I was using the bot CS file as our bot configuration uh, file and then using the program to do the get away to get result and that kind of stuff and apparently that's not the way to do it right so like that's why I had you know like you know like that's why I had to just rewrite the whole you know like early parts of the series to just keep up to date that like obviously like a lot of you long time viewers already know this but for the newer viewers, I just want to get that out of the way just to keep you guys updated on what's happening here. So let's get started. So um, like obviously there is the there is the Discord bot template. I always say this in every single video now. Um, like it's just a nice way to get started making a Discord bot. It's a very nice empty framework for you lot to you know to like to approach test new features if you need to um, and then merge them into your main bot. Um, but it's just very easy to just get started with this template. So like make sure you check this template out. The link is in the the description. So um, one thing I want to get out of the way, um, like this is very serious. When we do these kind of things, where we you know learn new things, I hugely advise you lot to please do your research before you go ahead with the video because there is no point in just going balls deep on how to do something if you don't know what that is or how it works. I've said this with the actual Discord bot itself. There's no point trying to learn how to make a Discord bot if you don't know things like programming languages. You know, like what's the point of coding a Discord bot in C Sharp if you don't know how to code C Sharp? So it's just common sense things like that. Please do your research on, on databases in general before you start this video so that you have at least a basic idea of what you're dealing with uh, because like I've seen a lot of people that are joining my discord server you know like I'm not saying everyone but like a lot of them have this sort of like clueless m mindset they just come in and then paste in the code and then they just expect us to fix it for them no research done no effort to fix the issue there's just none of that like they just come in with this clueless mindset and just ask us to 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 you know like fix the error so please, I don't want you guys to be like that, seriously. Like that's not how you learn as a programmer. That's not how you grow as a programmer. You must do research, research and just practice. That's literally it. So um, like here, I've got a few points that they can research. How to write SQL scripts, because we will be doing like a lot of that. How to write um, a creation script to, you know, like create a table, how to write a script to extract data. So like a select script, stuff like that. Um, they also need to know how classes in C-Sharp work, you know, like I've been showing this to you a lot of times, so like this should be nothing new to you, but still keep up to date with how classes work in C-Sharp and also how a database table works. So stuff like primary keys, foreign keys and stuff like that. So make sure you research these points before you start this video. We're not going to do any coding here. I want to like, explain to you what actually a database is, like, you know, like most of us have have heard of a database but we actually don't know what it is most people when they hear a database they think of a table like an excel spreadsheet so for example if i open excel up and then i just open up a spreadsheet this is what people usually think a database is it's like a massive table of information right that's not actually it it's not actually it you know like in terms of like the actual meaning of a database that's not what a database is 
A database is actually a massive collection of information. There's multiple tables within a database. Think of this massive square as the database. And then you have underneath it a thing called a schema. So in a database, you could have multiple schemas and this allows for very good organization of information. So like you might have a schema for user information or you know like stuff on items in a shop, like stuff on business expenses. There's different schemas for different types of information. And within those schemas is where we have our, um, our different tables. The, like, that's actually within the lower hierarchy of an actual database. The you know, like, table is the lowest thing in the hierarchy of a database. So like the first thing that comes is the database, then the schema, and then the tables come after it. Um, so like hopefully like this gives you like a better understanding of what a database actually is. It's not a table, but tables are stored within it. It's a massive collection of information, multiple schemas, multiple tables containing lots of information um, on your various needs. So these are some database types that you might have seen before. So like obviously there's the most popular one, like MySQL those are really popular there's obviously post great sql this was really good and each type comes with its own features so let me get you onto imported database terminology so that you guys like sort of understand what you're supposed to deal with in a database so like the first thing was schema so um like this is what i showed you in that diagram so like you have your database and then you have your schema which basically contains all your tables and information so a database can have multiple schemas depending on what information you're trying to store like user information business stuff etc etc in a database table you have this thing called a primary key and this primary key is like the actual identifier for that row of data so say if i had a primary key of number one then that primary key is basically the accessor to that row of information so that primary key of number one might contain the like the username bob and then they might have an id of i don't know um like six five four three two one or you know like something like that so like this primary key is the unique accessor for a row of data and this must be unique otherwise there will be conflictions right say if two rows have the same primary key well, there's going to be a confliction because the database doesn't know which one to access, right? So in order to prevent that from happening, each primary key we set must be unique. Each primary key for each row of data must be different. The next thing is an SQL query. This is basically like a question we are asking the database. Get this user when their username is equal to Bob. So that's what an SQL query is. It's basically a script that we can write to basically query a database to get specific information for us. And we'll be using this a lot in our Discord bot where we'll need to access specific user information, right? In our profile system, the user executed the profile command. We need to ask the database to retrieve that user specific information and we'll have to write an SQL query based on that. So we'll be using this a lot. So please, once again, make sure you do your research, practice using SQL queries, practice writing them. The last thing, is the database connection string so when we implement our database in our discord bot we need to use this connection string to access the database so um, like this connection string usually contains our host name our username and password and stuff like that and normally it looks like this so like this is what a connection string looks like and we'll be using this in um, our c sharp discord bot when we link our c sharp discord bot to our database let's Let's do this step by step, right? So first of all, we will plan our database. What do we want to actually store in this database, right? What kind of information do we need to store in our database? And we'll be making our tables according to that. Because like there is no point going in balls deep, starting coding, and you don't even know what your database looks like, right? So first of all, let's actually plan and set up our database so that we know what we're storing, right? The next step is to actually implement this in our Discord bot. So, you know, like write the code to like store information to this database or retrieve data from this database and like put it into your commands and make sure to test it as we go to see if it works as intended, right? And then the final step is obviously to deploy it to our VPS or wherever you're hosting the, um, like the bot. So first step is planning. 
Second step is implementing this. And the third step is to publish it live to your public Discord bots. So let me go through each phase and explain to you what it is that we'll be doing in those phases. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to implement it for real in code. So in our planning phase, we need to think about what sort of information we are storing in our database. Are we storing user information? So like for, you know, so, you know, like for example, in user information, we might need to store usernames, user IDs, date they made their account. So, you know, like stuff like that is very similar to our profile system, right? Use Microsoft Excel to make a table or just draw it out for yourself on a piece of paper. You must design your table so that you know what it is you're storing. storing. This planning phase is, is really important. Or otherwise, you'll literally come across errors in your code because of poor planning. So here's some examples of some tables. So this is our primary key. So it's just going to be numbers. And for each user, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's just going to continue going. So that way it's unique. And then here there is a like there is a column for usernames, user ID and then server IDs. So like there's a good example. And here's one for items in a shop. So, for example, here's the item number. Here's the primary key. And then this is the item name. So, for example, a sword. And then the price might be 100 of any currency. I don't know, you know, pounds or dollars or whatever. And then maybe like an item category to, to you know, like sort it properly. So a sword is a weapon, right? So make sure you plan your database before you actually put stuff in it for real. Next up is implementing. So like in C Sharp, there are many, many, uh, you know, you know, like many, many ways to implement this. There's obviously Microsoft's Entity Framework Core. There's obviously plenty of NuGet packages out there, um, and there's also plenty of database providers to choose from. Now, bear in mind, like a VPS, it doesn't come for free. There are some database providers out there who do it for free, but I'm gonna assume that is very limited, and you know, like there's you know, like limited traffic, li limited features, so. Make sure you choose a good database provider. Just as a heads up, we'll be using a package called NPG SQL. And if you know what this package is, then you'll know that this is actually a PostgreSQL database type. So I'm going to be using PostgreSQL as the um, um, as the database type for this video. Um, like I know, I'm totally aware that there are plenty of database types out there. I know, and like, I'll just leave those criticisms to the comment section. I know. Um, but I'm just going to use what I know, what is most comfortable to me. Um, I actually learned PostgreSQL during my second year of uni. Um, and honestly, it's actually a, a, you know, like pretty good database type to work with. And also what we'll be using is an application called dBeaver. Make sure you have this installed before we start coding our database. And what we can do in here is actually connect to our database using this application and our connection string and actually view all the different schemas and tables in our database. So this is a very useful application as you can see in that screenshot there. This is an example of what a table looks like. So once again, this is the same thing with making a C Sharp Discord bot you need to do your research i can't stress this enough and i've been saying this a lot research is so important and i've been finding a lot of people don't do this they just go balls deep and they just start coding and just like and you know like seeing errors that they don't know how to fix please do your research it is so important look at manuals documentation articles make sure you guys know how to write good SQL queries for your specific database type. As I've seen like with like a lot of database types, like the way you write SQL queries is actually slightly different. It is not like, you know, like hugely different, but it's slightly different between each database type. So make sure you research how to write SQL queries for your preferred database type. And um, like obviously for, for this tutorial, I'm, I'm like uh, you know, like I'll be using PostgreSQL. So if you want to use PostgreSQL as well, then make sure you do your research. Um, and um, um, and one more thing, please use the debugger. Honestly, uh, like I've seen, like a lot of people don't use this. It's it's quite sad, honestly, because you know, like they see an error, but they don't debug their program to see where this error is happening and what your code is doing line by line. So please use the debugger use breakpoints man it really helps like i've seen a lot of people do this they put console.write lines at specific lines where they might think it fails that also works but please use the debugger because it will help you a lot 
during testing. A try catch blocks also work as well because they catch errors. They don't force your application to crash. Um, like they're just so useful. So please keep this in mind. And that's about it for this part one video. So um, like hopefully after this video, you will have learnt a basic idea of what databases are and what is the plan for us to approach implement this in a Discord bot. So there's no code involved in here, but this is a very important video for you, for you know those of you that don't know what databases are. In the next few videos, we're going to be implementing this for real now. So we'll be using MPG SQL um, in our C# -sharp Discord bot every step of the way to properly integrate a database in your C# -sharp Discord bot with no errors and pretty much as optimized as it can get. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Once again, please make sure you do your research on databases. It'll, it'll literally help you a lot. Uh, and like, aside from that, make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel. Um, like, make sure you keep up for those future videos because they'll be very important. So I'll see you a lot in the next one. Peace out.